What's going on supporters? Before the video starts, I want to take a quick moment to thank everyone for 11,000 subscribers. The growth is unreal. I got some quality content in the works, so be sure to like the video, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to click on that notification bell so you don't miss an upload. All of the information provided in the following video is already public, therefore it will not be impeding on past, pending, or current cases. So sit back, relax, and as always, enjoy the video. Department out there. Oh, so why are you hiding from cabbage, man? <laughs> I heard someone from rehab, someone that just got released out of rehab is trying to go on his story and talk crazy about me. You know what I'm saying? First thing first, man. Oh, you guys keep sending me back. What are you talking about? I didn't have a home for six months. Who's Fatal gun violence across Toronto. Two days marred by eight shootings, claiming four lives. CP24, my young and child score. Noah Tesfai, aka Loco City, is a Toronto-born rap artist raised by the West Downtown neighborhood of St. James Town, specifically Bleecker Street. St. James Town is the largest high-rise community in Canada and is home to politician Olivia Chow and actor Stephen James. In 2013, it became the host of the world's tallest mural, pending approval by Guinness World Records. Clearly Bleecker has a rich history, however, it has also been identified as one of 13 economically deprived neighborhoods within the city. It has been the scene of many gang-related shootings over the past two decades, but more recently the notable block has been suffering from an opioid epidemic. Growing up in a clearly hostile environment with a number of horrible influences surrounding him, Loco City would make an attempt to steer himself on the right path by entering the studio at the age of 16. On October 19, 2015, Loco would release his first song on SoundCloud, titled Don't Freestyle, a remix of Bryson Tiller's breakout single, Don't. Don't play, don't play with it. It was an instant hit. Fans were left asking for more. Unfortunately for them, Loco would only drop two more songs by 2017. With his unique melodies and airtight cadences, it was clear Loco had great potential, but when his consistency was questioned, Loco asserted he was in no rush to create a full body of work. I feel like each song I drop has a different meaning, he shared with Vice News author Shireen Taylor. I don't want to give all my music at one time. There has to be space, because literally each track I create is a different time of what I was going through. He further elaborated by discussing the increasing pressure he faces as a rising artist. However, fast forward to May 7th. 2018, that pressure didn't seem to phase him in the slightest, as he would release his breakout single CP24, a song named after Toronto's local news station. The song went viral and it didn't take long for Loco to catapult his way into the limelight, becoming the city's youngest and most popping new artist. Unfortunately, he wouldn't be able to savor the rewards for long, as just two months after the release of his breakout single, Loco would receive devastating news. 20 seconds was all it took for this to go from a peaceful Canada date to a deadly public shooting. These videos, obtained by CTV News Investigates from the Ontario Superior Court, show the moment Ibrahim Kiar squeezed a trigger, emptying his gun into a crowded street. And his target, 19-year-old Marcel Temi, died days later, devastating his family. 19, it was a baby, my baby. Canada Day 2018. Loco City's childhood friend, Marcel Timmy, a.k.a. Congo, would be outside of a bar in Kensington Market when he was confronted by Ibrahim Kyer. 
Ibrahim was a 6'2", 220-pound narcotics dealer for the Dixon City Bloods, had previously served 14 years in prison and was on the run for first-degree murder. Ibrahim arrived to the bar with a few friends and partied within the vicinity of Congo with no issues whatsoever. However, as the day was coming to an end, the liquor started hitting and mood started changing. According to investigators, an inebriated Congo engaged in an argument with Ibrahim and one of his friends. The argument quickly escalated leading to Congo punching Ibrahim's friend in the face. Ibrahim, who is described by lawyers as having a short fuse, then proceeded to ask Congo, do you want smoke? Without hesitation, Ibrahim pulled out a handgun from his waistband and fired four shots at Congo. Congo fell and was lying on the ground when he was struck by another four shots, again fired by Ibrahim. Those last four shots also ended up hitting three innocent people standing in the line of fire. Fortunately, they were not seriously injured. Ibrahim then fled in a car, but crashed a short distance away. He managed to evade police for six months before they found him. In May of 2022, a jury convicted Ibrahim of manslaughter and three counts of aggravated assault. He has yet to be sentenced. Congo's family and friends were left mourning, especially Loco City. The days following his death, Congo was memorialized in his stomping grounds, bleaker, through a giant mural of himself. Friends and family also gathered to say their last goodbyes by releasing balloons in his honor. Loco City, however, immediately took to the studio as he found solace in his own songs. One month after the death of Congo, he released a single called Crazy, which paid homage to his fallen friend. The song went viral, along with his next two singles he would put out the following year. He even went further by collaborating with other artists in the city, which is rare in the Toronto music scene. The death of Congo clearly ignited something within Loco as the quality of his music and his work ethic developed virtually overnight. However, even with the dramatic rise in success, fame, and fortune, Loco was still living within the bleaker community, and the demons from his past would come back to haunt him. Towards the end of 2019, Loco City would be arrested on a gun possession charge and subsequently placed on house arrest. This marked the beginning of Loco's lengthy legal troubles. October 25th, 2018, CCTV captured Loco City and a friend leaving the lobby of 200 Wellesley. With a history of unsolved murders and an alarming number of suicides, 200 Wellesley has been dubbed by locals as Toronto's most ominous address. Within 20 seconds of leaving the community housing building, Loco and his friend were both stopped by Toronto Police Constables Andrew Mason and Jason Bogue. In court, they both testified that they believed the young men were suspicious because they were quote-unquote just standing there, prompting them to stop and search them. Constable Bogue then claimed Loco City gave a false name, assaulted him, and later fled, prompting a foot chase after which a loaded Glock handgun was found discarded. Loco was very much known to police at this point, so they were able to track him back to his apartment with ease, prompting them to conduct a premise check authorized by the Trespass to Property Act. The ordeal was live streamed on Loco's Instagram. We're gonna get your shoes. Okay, We're gonna try to be human about this. But, but if you're not gonna cooperate, but what's the breach for? I'm telling you, you have to speak to the detective. What? Right? So when we bring you the situation, you're gonna speak to the detective. Are you guys seeing the shit right now? No, true. I don't know. Sit down here. I don't know. Sit down. You guys are here. Grab me some shoes. No, you guys keep sending me money. What are you talking about? I didn't do shit. I've been home for six months. What did I do wrong? Bro, I've been at home. Loco was released on bail shortly after the incident, but once the case made its way to trial and all the evidence was reviewed, it was found that the constables were lying. 
Ontario Court Justice Lori Thomas found there was no reasonable cause to stop Loco and his friend in the first place, and when they were unlawfully searched, Loco did not escalate the situation, nor did he get physical with the officer. This was confirmed by reviewing security footage at 200 Wellesley. Court Justice Thomas went on record saying, the officers showed blatant disregard for Loco City's charter rights and their own duties, and there was also no assault or attempted assault on the officers. I find that race, along with age and gender, played a role in the officer's notion that Loco City and his friend were potential offenders, whether trespassing or criminally. I further find that race was part of the motivation to investigate and detain the men. As such, Loco City and his friend were racially profiled when the officers approached them for a groundless TPA violation. She also found the officers failed to give Loco City his rights to counsel in a timely manner, violating another constitutional guarantee. Loco was subsequently acquitted of all charges. With 2018 being a year full of highs and lows, Loco entered the next year as a man on a mission. At the end of January, he released his single, Job Done, which broke a million views with ease. One month later, he dropped Never Know, a song that touches upon the harsh realities of growing up in Bleecker. It was another showcase of Loco City's exceptional melodic capabilities and compelling lyricism. Then when the Toronto Raptors won the NBA championship later in June, he released his highly anticipated 8-track debut album titled, Save Yourself. With the release of the album, Loco took the next steps as a rising artist and went on a promo run, and for the first time in his career, he began performing at sold-out shows across Canada. Listen, I've been telling a lot of cats when they ask me, when cats from like the other side of the border, they ask me who's popping in the city, your name tends to come up a lot out of my mouth, my guy. I really rock with you. In the studio with us right now is the boy, Loco City! 2019 was clearly a monumental year for Loco, and there were high hopes for the same energy to be carried into 2020. But as we all know, the pandemic hit and the world essentially shut down. Toronto especially was hit the hardest as the city went through one of the longest lockdowns on record. Loco was one of many artists impacted by the pandemic as he would release just one song that year. However, throughout 2020, rumors began swirling indicating Loco had entered into Cam H, a rehab center for those experiencing addiction and mental health issues. Loco and his team went ghost for several months, refusing to address any of the speculation until Loco himself made a rare appearance on an Instagram live stream with Toronto rapper Top 5, who is currently awaiting trial for first degree murder during the live loco's behavior was erratic to say the least loco are you hiding from cam each man your looks looks your look you're well gone bro bro my dog my dog my nigga i'm gonna ask you a question and then i'm gonna what you saying though oh yeah, yeah. Happened, though? i heard you not stop it that's what you're talking today <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm out here, man. I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't claim that as mine. I mean, I won't lie, that. You know what I mean? You told Flipper Joe you after Sluggy. Nah, I'm throwing my dog though. I put Flipper though. <laughs> <laughs> my G, my G, man. Cam H, man. Come to our yeah. side, man. You're gonna go blow, man. No, I'm gonna get blown, man. Nigga, I'm out here. I got a GGG chain for you, man. I got a GGG chain for you, man. Come, come holler at me, bro, bro. No way, Daddy. I know. I eat your shit. You know what I'm saying? Well, how are you? You a fool? What? You know what I'm saying? Bye-bye. Yo, 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 broski. If you're at least going to be turned, smoke on that sluggy. Well, I'll keep you relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got one. So, look, I'm hollering at him, eh? Yo, I'm going to holler. I'm going to holler. Yo, look, I'm going to holler. Yo, you're local. Loco, I'm gonna holler at you, bro. We're at 3,000 yeah. views. I'm gonna, you're local. Why are you moving like that, fam? My woman. Why, why are you moving so gut, fam? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> you are a goat. You are a goat. 
Despite the alarming behavior, Loco provided fans with a message reassuring them he had big moves on the way for 2021. Although Loco kept an optimistic perspective, he would not be prepared for what would unfold at the start of the new year. Thank you for joining us. I'm Tracy Tong. A double shooting turned deadly in Toronto tonight. It happened in a laneway in the Young and Summer Hill area. Emergency crews arrived on scene. They found two victims, a man who was pronounced dead on scene, as well as a woman who had life-threatening injuries. She has been taken to hospital and is currently being treated for those injuries. January 29th, 2021. Loco City's childhood friends Sirak Tesfe, a.k.a. Hammer, and Hennig Mesgina, a.k.a. Henny, would be at a midtown condo by Young Street and Summer Hill Avenue hanging out alongside Hammer's girlfriend, Jacqueline. Less than a week prior to meeting up, both men were spotted in a music video released by Loco City. In the song, Loco describes his friends as young rich men who are not to be played with. On the day of the meetup, Nothing was unusual between Henny and Hammer as they were hanging out in the condo for a while before they stepped out along with Jacqueline. It is said the group walked towards the laneway of the condo, right by Summerhill Station and congregated there for some time. Several minutes would go by before bullets would start flying. Both Hammer and Jacqueline were hit several times. Hammer died at the scene while Jacqueline survived, but she was left in critical condition and bedridden in the hospital for two months. During that time, she started a now-closed GoFundMe, detailing what she had experienced. She wrote, Seeing my boyfriend murdered two feet away from me is something I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. I can never unsee that and then on top of that, I got shot nine times after. I almost died. Jacqueline was discharged from hospital after two months, and it was then when Toronto police informed the public that Henny and another man associated with Bleeker was arrested in relation to the murder of Hammer and the attempted murder of Jacqueline. Reports indicate Henny had not only shot Hammer, but he also robbed him of his cell phone and condo keys. He then stole several items out of his condo and fled in his own vehicle. Henny is incarcerated and awaiting trial. The motive for the slaying is still unknown. With the loss of now two of his childhood friends, both of which experiencing horrific deaths, this would undoubtedly take a toll on Loco. He stopped putting out music and all activity on his social media halted immediately after the death of Hammer. Several months would go by with no word from the Bleecker native until one deadly night in October when news broke of a series of shootings in the downtown core. A plaza, an apartment, and a taxi. The settings are different, but the stories are the same. The scenes of fatal gun violence across Toronto. Two days marred by eight shootings, claiming four lives. Weekend's bloodshed started early Saturday morning. At 12.36 a.m., 28-year-old Kamal Daly was killed at a plaza at Jane and Yorkwood's gate. At 2.20 a.m., 36-year-old Donald DeRoy Smokey Marson was shot dead in an Eglinton and Keel apartment. At 3.42 p.m., a man was killed outside a Highway 401 in Weston Plaza. At 3 a.m. Sunday, a 17-year-old was shot in a drive-by on Highway 427. Two hours later, a woman walked into a hospital with gunshot wounds. At a quarter to 8 a.m., a man was shot at an Eglinton and Oakwood restaurant. At 8.22 p.m., a man was shot multiple times at Parliament and Wellesley. And at 5 after 9 p.m., a man was killed in his cab at Pharmacy and Eglinton. October 23, 2021. In a span of a weekend, Toronto saw eight separate shootings. The seventh happened near Parliament Street and Wellesley Street East just after 8 p.m. When officers arrived at the scene, they located a male victim with several gunshot wounds. It was Loco City. He was rushed to a trauma center in serious condition. Fortunately, he made a full recovery, but when investigators found a firearm and several shell casings at the scene, Loco City was charged with several firearms offenses. He was sentenced to two years at the Toronto South Detention Center and two years of probation once he is released. 